Hello and welcome back to OT the podcast. We're here to talk about watches, time, and how to spend it. I'm Andy Green. I'm Felix Schultz. Felix, how are you this fine afternoon? I'm pretty good. It's uh, lovely weather out there. It's getting getting towards the dusk, I would say. I'd, I'd say you're correct. Yeah. Felix, we've got a fair bit to talk about. We've got a exciting watch matchmaker. This was a good one. I'm excited. Uh, this is someone that came in through your networks of little birds, wasn't it? It was one of my little birdies. Uh, it's quite the challenge. There's mm. some pretty strict criteria. Before we get into it, Felix, have you seen anything that uh, has tickled your fancy? Yeah, I mean, there's been a bit of a, a bit of, a bit happening on the release front, possibly due to the fact that uh, watches and wonders formerly SIHH, mm. is going digital this year, and that's happening in about 48 hours as of when we record it. So, so I expect when that'll have, uh, when you're hearing this, it'll all be out there. So all those lovely new IWCs and Cartiers will be everywhere. But we're not talking about that today. No, we're not. We're not. Uh, did you see the new Breitling? Oof, how could I miss them? Which one are you talking about? I, I was into the Chronomat. Yeah, me too. The uh, that bracelet, the bullet style bracelet, yeah. is what, what are they, super cool. Rollo or Rollo or something like that. Yeah. I'm looking at the uh, the two tone at the moment. I actually um, I asked Mr. Kern. I, I, I Instagrammed. Okay. I said, "Is there a yellow gold one?" And he's like, "Yes, it's happening." And then I went through the press release and I couldn't see it. So I assume I got the scoop there. Okay. Well, there's a wow. Um, because there's a full red gold. Yeah, and there's a two-tone. Oh, so I was, sorry, I was asked about two-tone steel and yellow oh, gold. Like the original was yellow, yeah, gold, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, that's. I think you want to go those uh, '80s vibes hard. So he said that. I don't know if that was a translation thing or uh, you, you know, but it's on the internet, so it's true. I tell you, the the two-tone with the blue dial, mm-hmm. hot, hot. It's just a hot watch. It's really nice. It's. Um, I think Breitling are finally finding their feet and getting into the groove, so to speak. And you know what else I liked? What? The Super Ocean Heritage 57 LE. Very groovy. I know you like that. I think so. we all like, I think there's no surprise to anyone that knows us even a little bit that we're all over that watch. What did you like aside from the uh, the rainbow touches on the dial? The rainbow touches on the dial. I, I, I don't mind, I like the Econil straps. I think they're mm. cool. And I like, I, I think one of the things, um, I don't know if they announced it around at the summit or before it, but they're sort of ditching uh, packaging and paperwork, mm. so they're going all digital for environmental reasons, which is cool. That's pretty cool, and I think the size for mm-hmm. for this brand is is really interesting for them to enter into. Forty two? No, no, it's smaller. It's no. like, I think it's like the forty. Okay, 41. yeah, it wouldn't be thirty eight, would it? Let me have a look. Let me have a look. Case is it's hundred meters water resistant. Forty? No, it's forty two, but it's uh, the thickness is like nine millimeters. Yeah, it's a skinny boy. It's a real skinny boy, yeah. and it's got that sort of inward concave bezel. Yeah, the sort of like that right, we saw it on the Rado Captain Cook as well. So yeah, very similar, very similar yeah. with like this rainbow bursting yeah. out of the dial. It's lovely. Anyway, uh, Breitling have been good. What else in uh, in terms of colourful dials? You you popped something else in my box. I did pop something else. There, there's a couple of new Time XQs that just dropped. Three, in mm. fact. Mm. Uh, there's a green and black with a black dial. Uh-huh. Navy and orange with a blue dial, and a red and blue with a white dial. Ooh, that polar GMT. Uh, question for me. Yes. Does your dad have regrets? Has he seen them? He hasn't. I don't, know, don't, don't want to show him just yet. I think, he, I think he likes his choice, but I tell you, the white dial of the existing one is, is pretty cool. And yep. as always, they're 179 US dollars. They're due all out. sold out already. Well, they're not out until June, so it's sort of a pre- pre-order, and then you can kind of hop yeah, on there. Yeah, cool. Hypey. Well, well done, Timex. Whoever's... Whoever's doing product at Timex is uh, onto a good thing. Yeah, no, fantastic. Uh, and now something pretty cool is happening. Speaking of watches, speaking of retailers, the Hourglass are doing something. Yeah, I got a, I got a, I got a press release the other day from the, the Hourglass. They're doing a series of short films, and I believe the first one has just dropped or is about to drop. Uh, it's, they're, they're focusing artists and independent watchmakers. Love it. And it's, uh, you know, they're, they're full-on short films. The Hourglass don't do things by halves. Mm-hmm. Kicking off with uh, Max Bussa from MBNF. Wow. But some other names we might recognise uh, in the mix are, Re- I'm going oh, to mangle this, Re- Recep, Recepi? Sounds Re- good to me. Recep? Recep. 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 Uh, from Acrivia, Roger Smith, uh, wow. Oki Seto from uh, Nendo, the sort of design creative yeah. agency. Uh, and your mate, what's his name? Daniel Asham. Um, Daniel Asham. We're and, good mates, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And uh, Mark Neeson. So a bunch of the heavy hitters from the world of the finer things in life and little little vignette looks into their life. Wow, Mr. Tay has uh, picked quite the bunch. Yeah, I mean, it's the hourglass, man. You don't, they don't mess around. Okay. Uh, speaking of not messing around, 
before we get into the serious business of watch matchmaking, tell me about something you've liked. Something I've liked. Okay, this is a, uh, a documentary on Netflix called LA Originals. Have you heard about this? No. Okay, so it's this, as I said, documentary basically about these two artists who have made this huge impact on LA street culture uh, with their photography, film, tattoos, hip hop, that sort of thing. And so it's, it's, it's based around Estevan Oriel, who actually made the film. So he's the photographer of the duo. And this guy called Mark Mercado, who's otherwise known as Mr. Cartoons, a very famous tattoo artist. And it's a bit of an insider's look into how these two kind of came together and the impact that they had. And it's, it's got this archival footage from like the last 25 years. Uh, it's got interviews with like Kobe Bryant, Eminem, 50 Cent, to you know, Ryan Phillip, to Scott Cowan, all talking about you know, the work that they've done, especially sort of the tattoo front. And so without ruining it, these guys have this really cool story of how they got into each of their kind of respective crafts. Mm. Uh, Mr. Cartoon started off doing street art before moving into tattooing uh, and accidentally kind of networked their way into these, you know, these elite circles. Mm. Uh, Estevan, who's the photographer, he ended up, he started out as like a tour manager and right before he was going on tour with Cypress Hill and I think House of Pain, yeah, nice. his dad gave him an old camera and kind yep. of said, oh, I don't use this anymore, you have it. And this was like the late 80s, early 90s when there yeah. wasn't really tour photographers. So he just by default became the guy the taking photos. Yep. And his photos started getting, you know, published here and there. And, the, you know, then he started doing album covers and he went on to photograph, you know, Al Pacino and all of these sort of other, you know, really legit, legit celebrities. Yeah, cool. Which is really, really cool. Anyway, their pair, the, the pair's path eventually crossed and they started doing a lot of work together. Uh, through, again, through those that late 80s, early 90s, you know, Mr. Cartoon went on to open a open a tattoo studio uh, and Estevan would kind of take f- photography around it, in and around it. Anyway, it's just super fascinating to watch how these kind of guys partied, hustled, travelled and created while sticking through their roots and just ended up with this sort of underground cult status. So that's – I really enjoyed it. Is it stressful or positive? No, no, it's, it's – oh, look, there's a few uh, confronting-ish scenes, but for the sure. most part it's quite positive. Like it's not like gangs or anything like that. Yeah, it's just, yeah. I mean, you know – LA in the 80s, 90s can be a uh, fraught subject matter. Yeah, well, I mean, he did set up the tattoo studio on Skid Row, so there's yeah, a bit well. of that in there. But I, I think the, one of the points that the, the film really hones in on is the impact uh, in the influence that LA street culture has mm. on other parts of the world. Yeah, sure. And in, everything from, like, low riders to style to tattoo style. I mean, you know, Eminem's on there raving about, you know, Mr. Cartoons doing mm. his tattoos and sort of it's like, a you know, a 22 year old Eminem talking about spending 50 grand on a tattoo, which I mean, I've priorities. Got, well, I mean, I've got tattoos and I've got expensive tattoos and they're nowhere near 50 grand. So yeah, sure. It's just price what you want. How many tattoos do you have, Andy? Uh, six. Does anyone want to know the real answer? Mm, six. <laughs> anyway, what have you been into Felix? Uh, well, look, I've cheated a little bit. I've pulled something uh, off my bookshelf. You've got an actual book with you. I did. I brought some, uh, some show and tell with me. Yep. Uh, I've been removing my house around, you know, because what else am I going to do uh-huh. at home all the time? And I've got a book that I picked up at Basel 2018, I think. Very cool. It's a lovely book called The Magic of Watches, A Smart Introduction to Fine Watchmaking by Louis Nardin. And it was written, I think, or put together with help from uh, Beth Dur from Quill and Pad. Um, and it is, it's one of my favourite books. Why? It's, it's just so good. Like, have a look at it. I don't know if you've really seen it. Just have a look. Have a bit of a flick well, through. Passing me the book. I am. I'm this is the book that you've uh, you've offered to lend me out, but you never actually have. Got I it to not. Me. No. I should lend it to you. You should take it. Um, it's it's pretty introductory mm-hmm. in its um, like you know if you're deep in the in the, the dinky comment section in the forums and whatever, it'll be familiar to you. But it's also it's just so well explained. Like it'll go through the different types of of gear. It'll go through like how dial printing works. And it's really clearly explained. Like Louis Nardin obviously knows about watches and knows how they work. So, and yeah, there's well. no BS. It's sort of like an encyclopedia approach. It's really, really, and it looks beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful books I've seen. I'm taking it with me. And that last name sounds familiar. Uh, yeah, I believe he's related to the Ulysse Nardin, Nardin, like from way back in the day. Grandpa. Something like that. Who knows? But it's really, and it's a, such a beautifully designed book. Oh, Let's pop a photo up on Instagram. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to take that with me tonight. And Don't wreck it. <laughs> okay. I need, I need one of those uh, little. This is your uh, reference point. Is it? This is what you go back to when you're. 
I, I, I legitimately like if you're ever going, huh? What's what in is, the hands of those? Yeah, like st- mm. I, I still use it every so. Like, what is barley corn versus you know hobnail or th- that sort of stuff? Like, it's, what is the dial? What is time? What is well at the moment? Okay, that's yeah, cool. That's me. So I really enjoy that. It's a bit hard to get. I think the Hodinkee shop has it, and you know Amazon every so often has it. So get on it. It's great. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Well, should we get into a watch matchmaker? We should. Can you tell us about this one? Okay. So this is uh, this is quite the brief. Uh, so can, can I just say I stuffed up this brief. I, I I did what you did it a little while ago. I think. Yeah. And this time I'm like Andy. I've got these great watches. They're all bangers. Yeah. You've, you've you've done this on the way here, haven't you? No, no, no. I've, I had to do it again. Um, okay, you've redone it. All right. Yep. So here we go. Hey guys, just thought I'd message and congratulate you on the new podcast. Thank you. I have a case for you. I'm wanting to buy a watch for my brother's upcoming upcoming 21st birthday present. Here's a bit about him. He's studying fine art and majoring in sculpture work. Okay, so he gets his hands dirty. If he had something he didn't have to worry about whilst working, he'd wear a watch a, a watch much more often. Okay, so he has a very small wrist, uh, a vintage 36 or a modern 34. Millimeter watch suits him very well, I'd say perfectly, but he could probably stretch to 36 millimeters in a modern watch. He loves the Oyster Perpetual 114200 in the olive dial. Okay, that's uh, very- 34 mil. Yes, yep. and he tried the Black Bay 36 on and thought the bezel was a little bit too flat, but he's not sure about that anyway. Budget wise, he's hoping to keep it under five grand, Aussie, uh, and that would be amazing. Mm. Okay, Dr. SK. So I, this, I came up with my excellent list and then realised uh, 34 to 36 mil. Look, <laughs> <laughs> I did I did when I sent it to you. I highlighted some key points. I said 34 to 36 millimetres, 5K max, arty, robust. So newish. I went 5K, arty, robust. Okay. Well, do you want to take us through yours? Yeah, look, let's... Uh, so obviously I've had a, I've had a bit of a, a redo. Yep. I've refined and I think I've even made them better. Fantastic. Um, so my first cab off the rank, I've gone all modern and I've gone 36 because I think, and one slightly larger, because I think it's often the way where you have a conception where you go, I can only wear this. And you sort of, go, oh, no, no, I'll never wear anything over 42 millimetres or I never, whereas you get used to it and you do it and it's fine. It's, I agree. Yeah. Not all watches wear the same. Yeah. And I think conceptions, you can sort of challenge them a little bit. And, a bit. and honestly, for a modern watch under 34 it's pretty tricky. It's a tough challenge. That's yeah. why we took it. What? Well, well, uh, yeah, it's not why I took it, but <laughs> sure. Um, so my first cab is the Stoa Fliga Classic 36. Bingo. Um, so this watch doesn't need too much in the way of description. It's a classic b style pilot's watch that, you know, Arabic numerals, big white, you know, hands, big white uh, triangle at the top with the two dots. It's a, you, you, a pilot's watch. Very piloty. Um, and still I make good stuff. I've had a few in the past. Um, there's also some nice options there. Like you can go logo on the dial, no logo, change the hands a little bit. You know, you can get automatic, you can get manual winding, you can, you know, mix it up. You get bracelet, leather, customise it a little bit. Not too, too crazy, like you're still looking at a black dial pilot watch, but... Tweak it a little bit around the edges. Um, What's the damage? Not too bad. 924 euro. Okay, so, so that's... Like 2K? Not even. Okay. Perfect. Oh, well, these days. Oh, sure. Yeah, well, you shipped and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. First one. That's And that's, I mean, to be fair, that's 36 and that'll wear pretty big, mm. I reckon. So maybe it's got a big crown. So that could be a bit of a sticking point. But the next one, what have I got? I've gone, I've gone large, but I think it's worth it. Okay. Uh, he liked that green dialed 34 oyster date. That he did. I've gone with the Rado Golden Horse Automatic Limited Edition. Now, this is a lovely, lovely watch. It's recent. It's from last year. It didn't get anywhere near the attention it should, I, I think it deserved. I was just about to say, I don't think I've ever seen this watch before. Yeah, it came out late in the year. Uh, it's got a gradient... It, it looks a lot, it's a very honest tribute to your sort of 50s, 60s Rados. I guess this is, a, I think, a 57 mm-hmm. tribute. Um, and, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. And it looks a lot sort of like that classic Rolex vibes. Mm-hmm. This one comes on a beads of rice bracelet. It's got a sort of a gradient green dial, cool double seahorse logo at the bottom, the golden horse. The Rado logo itself, uh, it actually moves if you've ever seen around. it. It's like a little anchor. Oh, yeah. Um, 37, how big is it? I can't even. 37, 37 millimetres. Yeah, 37 mil. 
Um, but I think it's worth it uh, having a look at. It's great watch. Powermatic movements so of 80, 80 hours power reserve. Wow. 50 metres water resistance, I'd like that a bit more, but certainly it's a tough modern watch, so it's, it'll be fine for his needs. Um, it's only going to deal with splashes of paint anyway. Oh, clay. Sc- yeah. who, who, I was going to ask, who knows what sort of sculpture he does? Like, it's a big difference if he's working with welding or, you know, macrame. Mm. It's, and it's, yeah, it's got vintage vibes, modern appeal, and the retail isn't too bad either. It's, I don't know about Aussie, but Swiss is 1,800 francs, so. Okay, that leaves plenty of, yeah. plenty of room. Yep. And so, it's limited, you said, to how many? I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. It's not crazy, a couple of hundred at least. But there's also, there's some other, you know, let me have a, let me have a squeeze. 1957 pieces. Yeah, there you go, 1957. Cool. So yeah, that's, that's a cool, that's a cool watch. And it's got this, it's a, what would you call that bracelet? Beads of rice? Yeah, it's a bra- be- beads of rice bracelet. Yeah, it's a nice look. And I think you, if you don't like that, you can flip it onto something else pretty easy. Well, that's a good choice for some of the slimmer wrists, the beads of rice, because you can kind of fit that quite Stuff. Yeah, it's really it's a really good fit sort of. You know, you're not going to have too many links flopping around unnecessarily. Uh, lastly, and close to my own heart, yep, no moss club. Okay, nice. Yep, thirty six mil. This is the basic club. This is there's yep. a lot of clubs out there, and if you want to go bigger, you can go. You know, the club campus, which has some really funky dials, which might be worth looking at. Mm. This one though, Alpha manual wind movement, thirty six mil. Super versatile watch, 100 metres water resistance, bit artsy. I think this nails it. It's, it's Nomos. It's got some cred in that area. That's a good choice. I have to admit I did have a, have a Nomos tucked away at the back of, the sh- back of my show notes. Yep. That's why I love Nomos so much is that you can kind of hop on the website, plug all your criteria in, and they're probably going to have something for yeah, you. Yeah, totally. I mean, this is, I mean, I think in general, if that's the sort of thing he's into, the, the value is really strong. Yeah. I mean, so those club campuses, they've got their sort of really top end, you know, their neomatic new movement in-house, you know, completely in-house. They come at around four and a half yeah. K, I think. But this one is quite cheap, 2,080 Australian dollars. Wow. And add a little bit of shipping, but you can also customise these. You can get a little uh, engraving on the back. Yeah, I don't. I think they cover shipping here. Oh. Maybe. Well, fantastic. Or maybe they don't anymore. But anyway, they're in retailers as well, so, you know. Yes, and like I said, you can engrave the back, so you could put a nice little... Uh, 21st birthday. Yeah, happy nice. birthday. Jesus, yeah. Jesus is a great brother, isn't he? I mean, this is... I wish I, someone, someone gave me a nomos for my birthday. I know, I know. Okay. All right, three good choices. We'll, uh, we'll talk about them all at the end. And what about you? You've got some uh, slightly left of centre I've, numbers as well. Yeah, I've got three, three as well, and I've sort of started on my sort of weaker option, building up to the... The strongest Ooh. watch I can put forward. You reckon this is your weak option? I think this is. Look, I think out of the three that I've chosen, I think <sighs> I've, I think I've done well this week. But out of the three that I've chosen, this is a probably the weakest. This is a Amido Commander Shade. This is a great watch. I'm, I don't think this is a weak option at all. I've seen this. This is a killer watch. It's a cool watch. Uh, it comes in at eleven hundred and twenty-five Aussie dollars. Oof. So crazy under budget. It's the sort of watch that's going to be well built, but you know, it's a good one to cut his horological teeth on. If I think about, you know, my 21st and if someone was to hand me a, a you know, $5,000 Tudor or whatever, it, it's, it's coming in a little hot for someone who's not a watch guy. And where does he go from there? That's a, yeah, I, I would say I sort of did the same thing with all mine as well. Good entry level. Yeah, yeah. so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the doctor here and, and saving him a little bit of money. Nice. So it's, it's a sort of a current uh, variation on the original Commander model from the 1970s. Mm. Mm, which you can tell. You can tell. Yeah, yeah, So it's got an automatic movement, obviously, coming from Mido. Uh, it's on the Milanese bracelet. It's got this, you know, vintage acrylic glass. Oh. Yeah, so you get a little, nice little tap out of it. Well, I don't know. Is that, is that uh, how does that go with hard wearing? Because nothing says, yeah. i got a shiny new watch to whack. I smacked it on. Well, there's $4,000 left to buy new <laughs> crystals. Crystals. Uh, so it's got this sort of gradient dial. It's really light in the center. And then it kind of expands. As it expands out, it darkens to like a gray black. Mm. And it's sort of got this satin finish to it. Uh, the case is a monocoque case, which means sort of a, you got this? One piece. Well, one. That was, that was me just saying one, one piece. One piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, can you say monocoque again? No. Uh, that took a lot of confidence the first time. Don't smirk at me, please. Uh, it's got these funky hour markers, hands. It comes in at 37 millimeters. Again, it's on that Milanese bracelet. So I think if I strap it a little bit tight, it'll, uh, it'll wear nicely. It's, it's also lugless. It's lugless. So there's, you know, it's got to wear small. Like, kind of like small. that Nomos with those big long lugs. Yeah. It wears a lot bigger that's than a very 36. Good point. So. Very good point. Yep. 20, minute, 20 millimeters between the lugs. 
the perfect size for swapping some straps out. Yep. 50 meters water resistant, so enough. And it's also got that day date feature. Overall, I think it's an accessible, interesting look at, you know, a watch that's not overly dressy mm. and it's a bit of an offbeat choice, something that, you know, I don't think most people will jump to, but, you know, why not? Do you reckon you do the gold version? That would look cool with a bit of wear as well. Yeah. Maybe. Might be a bit too out there for an on watch guy, but it's uh, cool. I mean, you know, it's kind of like you, you think of like I see, you know, I see the young kids wearing the gold Casios. Yeah, uh, true. It's like a flexier version of that like it's it's like a maybe maybe may, the doctor maybe the doctor should also show him the the gold option as well not bad not bad and i think this is as you said it's a bit of a bit of a pretty cool watch and i think a lot of watch guys are going to look this up after listening to the show and yeah be into it yeah i think we've got i think we've got a, a few good ones in that sort of realm what's mm. next for you okay so i'm stepping it up a little bit mm -hmm. the bremont solo 37 with a black dial interesting so this comes in at 4900 aussie yeah so right up the top right of the budget. under budget yep yeah, it's just under might get a spare strap or something. Mm. It is 37 millimeters, but it has those short, cur short curve lugs mm. with that sort of leading edge, you know, aircraft inspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. it does hug the wrist a little bit better. So they mm. look longer than they actually are. Mm. I think you'd enjoy wearing this. Uh, it's super legible, really kind of simple, clean dial, big, you know, hour and minute hands. It's been a bit of a staple in the Bremont offering. I think it's been out for like seven years. Yep. If he's in the studio, this thing will take... A beating. And it'll take an actual beating, like the the yeah. triptych case and the the hardened steel, whatever they do to it is it's it's tough. I mean, you know, we've talked about it before. I own a Bremont MB2. Yeah, they're just tough watches, and it's it's the watch I'd be wearing for any sort of hard work, anyway. Yep, and it's it's not going to have that. Um, yeah, the, you know, with the acrylic crystal. If you've got that, I I come back to someone that's not really worn a watch before. But I guess maybe if he's got the vintage Omega Seamaster, yeah. that's less of a concern. So, yeah, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. So interesting that I've also sort of chosen a uh, aviation inspired watch. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a, it's an obvious choice. Like in terms mm. of that sort of timeless design, it's it's a solid one. Very tall guy. That's what I would say. I mean, that wears pretty high, doesn't it? Yeah, a little bit thicker. Yeah, a little bit thicker. That's fair, but. Look, I think it's I think it's worth considering, seeing as he kind of is into the Black Bay 30, okay. 36. Yep. So. And different dials. There's a white one as well. There's a white one. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think the black's probably a little bit going to be a little bit more versatile for for the young 20, 21 year old man. Sure. Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit more versatile. You sure. Can dress it up. Dress it sure, down, sure. 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 So. Yeah. Solid. All right. My last one, I think, is an absolute bomb and it's it's going to be the obvious choice here the, you reckon yeah i reckon this is the this is the winner and if it's not mm. this specific spec it's going to be this watch is this only 36 mil they do it in 36 mil do they yeah so this is the oris divers 65 oh uh, yeah the original ones the original one was 36 yeah. and then they've made it bigger yeah they've, they've blown her up this is 36 millimeters with a domed sapphire crystal, 100 meters water resistant. Now I've gone for the stainless steel with the uh, bronze mm. bezel. Mm. So it's got that little kind of... Rose gold look. Yeah, a little look to it. They have Guilt. a... Yeah, guilty, guilty vibes. Yeah. They have a, obviously the standard stainless steel bezel that looks lovely as well. They've got heaps. They've got heaps. I reckon if you go there, there's got to be like at least 30 different options. I think you're pretty close yeah. to I think there's about 30. I think I counted 30 variations on the uh, 65. Yeah, just the 36 or both sides? Uh, probably both. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the bronze textile strap is is brown on this mm. this one, which matches that sort of uh, bronze bezel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I think at three grand, it's, uh, it still leaves so much money to play around with. It's a really robust watch to kind of get into as your first yep. nice, yep. nice watch after a, you know, vintage Seamaster. Yep. Yeah, you're right, actually. It's got those. And I mean, I might, depending on how bold he wants to go, there's that lovely um, Derville blue yes. sort of. Or the original one that had those sort of exploding Arabic markers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, honestly, it's if, if someone was to hand me this as a 21st birthday present... Stoked. You'd be absolutely over the moon. And that's why I think it's it's my best bet for it is because it's, it's, it's really as a significant gift. It's, it's mm. up there, but it's, it's not over the top. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, oh, look, it is that perfect star to watch. You're right. Mm. Um, is it a bit safe? Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I think. Well, safe in our eyes, but yeah, okay. When you're getting someone a gift, you kind of want to. True. You don't want to put yourself out there, stick your neck yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to have to go. Oh, I love it. Yeah. All right. So that's my three. What do yeah. you think? I think they're really great. Um, for me, it's between the Oris and uh, the Mito. Okay. 
I mean, not knowing the guy, I think the Oris has to win it. And I think there's enough. The Mito's more of a, a stretch, and if mm. and if the good doctor thinks that that's, that's one to go for, I reckon that could be really interesting, but I think the Oris is safer. Yeah, I agree. Sa- not, not, I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. I mean safer, but... Like, you can walk him into a shop and say, look, here's five watches, pick one. And yeah. It's got to be from crazy to... Or if he doesn't love the specific, you know, if he doesn't love the bronze, you can quite easily swap it over for something yep. else. A cool silver dial. There's yeah. A, yeah, there's a, yeah, there's options. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. I think, uh, into, and the size was kind of really stressed in that email as well. And I think mm. at 36, it's pretty perfect. Mm. It's pretty mm. perfect. Obviously, the other two are a little bit bigger and, you know, that Bramon especially is going to wear a little bit bigger, but... Hang on, yeah. there's another slide on this, Andy. What have you... You've, this was, you've snuck something else in there. This was one that I uh, I tucked away, and this was a Nomos Orion. Yeah, the Orion, yep. Yeah. And Very I, dressy. Yeah, I went for the... Uh, let me just pull it up here, because I uh, I've, this was uh, about a week ago I did this. Uh, this is the, the, the Grau Mitt Rose Gold, I can see from that picture. Yeah, so it's got a sort of a slaty yeah. dial. Comes in at 3110 Australian dollars. Yeah, okay. So this was one that I kind of ummed and ah about, and I thought maybe this is the safe choice. And I've wore, I've reviewed one. This was the original Nomos that I fell in love with, the okay. white dial version of these. And I'm like, yep. oh, this is it. This is the perfect watch. And I wore it, and it was too dressy for me. Too dressy? Yep. Okay, so this is a manual wind. Diameter is 32.8 millimetres. I wore one slightly larger than that. Yeah, so this I picked it because it was 32.8 and right. 17 millimetres between the lugs. And I thought, look, if he actually does have a skinny wrist and wants something robust, high quality, interesting looking. I mean, the first brand I looked at was Novos. Yeah, of course. For the for the young gent, because yep. it's it, when you get, when you're thinking about like pure design and you know kind of architecture and art, Novos is the brand that probably jumps out to me the most mm. in terms, of at least being inspired and by and affordability. Things. Like, yeah, like, let's be real there. Um, what I would do if I was taking this guy on a shopping trip. Yeah. I'd show him the Nomos first. I'd show him that size first and then I'd sell him on a bigger diameter. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think it's a, it's the reason I didn't kind of bring it up as a uh, as a front running choice was the size is just mm. just a touch too small. Yeah, I think with the, like you know, I'm pretty comfortable with 36 and I found the 36 Orion too small for me. Wow. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, there we go. So those are my three. I think if I'm looking at the, the three fellas you've put put mm. forward, I'm still kind of Gushing, low key gushing over the rata just because yeah. of that green dial. Yeah, it's great. Uh, and certainly, if he's like, if he likes that that thirty four mil um, olive olive um, Rolex, mm. you get all that, and like it's it's just cool. Yeah, that's a very cool watch. So I think that's a uh, I think that's a winner from uh, your bunch. Yeah, you uh, you didn't want to go to the club, I guess. I mean, it's yeah, well, a reliable choice to me. That's the uh, the safe choice. <laughs> the safe choice. Look, I think you're going to show him the Nomos and you're going to show him the Oris and he's going to pick one Agreed. of them. 100%. Yeah. All right. Chuck that right in there as well. Well, I'll tell you what, that was a hard brief. Thinking back to the size, the budget wasn't as much of a factor as the uh, as the size and being new. If, if he had said, I'm into something vintage, mm. yeah, we could have tracked down an old you know, date just or something. Sky's the limits, old Air Kings or whatever. Yeah. Air King. Why didn't we go 34 mil Air King? I don't think they make them anymore. No, but I think they make no, them. No, but like if... Yeah, like yeah. A early two thousands, like a lot of a lot of watch true. for the true, true, true. I mean, even Explorer one, you know, you yeah, can, sure, you know, we could have serviced it up and had it running like new, but yeah. that's not the way these. Uh, that's these that's work. not this hypothetical situation that we call watch matchmaking. Well, it's a real situation. It's a real okay. situation. So he'll take our advice on board. I want, to, uh, I want to know how we go. Yeah, I'm keen to know. I think the, mm-hmm. the birthday's later this year. Okay, so we'll have to circle back towards you know. Sure, 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 sure. Christmas. Nice. Uh, that was a great. Uh, that was a great run up. No, I don't think we've got anything else to say. No. How do we? How do we take these? How do you submit one? Ah, uh, well, I mean, we'll take them. However, really, like people just come to us on the street, yell at us. Um, yeah. But we prefer email, to be honest. Uh, ot the podcast at gmail dot com. At a pinch, we will take Instagram submissions. That is ot dot podcast. Yeah, and we'll probably tell you to shoot us an email anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, as always, Felix, I think this was a great episode. Thank you to our... Uh, Toot your own horn there, Andy. Yeah, I thought man. it was all right. It was okay. It was decent. You know what? The episode we're recording next yes. is going to be even better. Absolute banger. It's going to be great. It's going to be the best one. We'll just have to stay tuned to whatever it is. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you to Major Tom Media for producing the show, as always. He's a lovely guy. And if you'd like to get in touch, Felix... 
do that as per those previous details we shared. At Felix Schultz. Oh, 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 Mate, my, you're oh, off oh. today. <laughs> I'm FK Schultz on Instagram. Andy, who are you? Andy Green Live. Nice. Thanks, guys.